full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death amen in the name of the father son and the holy spirit amen, amen. brother in christ laudato jesus christus in sequela this is timothy flanders at the meaning of catholic jesus is king and i'm happy to be joined once again by dr e michael jones dr jones thanks for coming on the show today you're welcome tim good to be here yeah, so we're, we're talking about uh, Dr. Jones's latest tome, which is The Dangers of Beauty. This uh, fantastic text, which uh, we had to wait a little bit for the printing, but it was worth it because of all the color photos in this uh, magnificent uh, another tome from Dr. Jones. Uh, before we get into that, uh, make sure you subscribe to Culture Wars. Here's uh, the latest edition is on the Logos Incarnate in Iran. Um, Dr. Jones, what, what's, what's new with you? What, what, uh, are you working on a new book? What's your latest project? Yeah, I am actually, uh, just, just recently, uh, I was down, down in Kentucky where, uh, the magazine gets printed. I, these are uh, third order Dominicans. I've known them for over 40 years now. They've been working with me, uh, during that period of time. And as I was getting into the car to come back, uh, home, uh, Dennis Musk came up to me and handed me a card, uh, said his daughter is, uh, has brain cancer, but they're praying to Rose Hawthorne. Uh, and suddenly, uh, she, suddenly all these threads in my life kind of came together at this point. Uh, first of all, Rose Hawthorne is the daughter of Nathaniel Hawthorne, who is the author of The Scarlet Letter, probably the most famous American novelist. Uh, but more importantly, he's the author of uh, The Marble Fawn, uh, which is about uh, the fact that he took his family to Rome. Nathaniel Hawthorne uh, was a child of New England, uh, a provincial. Henry James, that's what Henry James called him. He was provincial. He spent his 50 years of his beginning of his life in New England villages. He wrote the biography, the campaign biography of Franklin Pierce, who was his classmate at Bowdoin College in, in uh, Maine. Pierce got elected and uh, Hawthorne was rewarded by getting the consulship in Liverpool, where he made enough money to go to Rome, where he arrived uh, around uh, 18, uh, the late 1850s with his entire family, including Rose, who was nine years old at the time. And uh, well, what they did for the next three years is travel around Rome. Now, this has direct relevance. I've already told you about the connection with Hawthorne. It also has direct connection. I wrote my doctoral dissertation on Nathaniel Hawthorne 50 years ago, almost 50 years ago. But 50 years ago, he was on my mind because I'm trying to figure out the mind of Nathaniel Hawthorne. And the book that came out of that, which was based on my doctoral dissertation, is called The Angel and the Machine probably the first book-length manuscript. It is the first book-length manuscript I ever wrote. Uh, and it talks about Hawthorne's rational psychology, a man caught uh, between two bad ideas, namely materialism on the one hand, the machine, and angelism or German idealism on the other. And the composite or the human being was made, was basically an angel imprisoned in a machine instead of uh, the soul uh, as the form of the body, which Thomas Aquinas would say. So that's got, that was another thread that brought me together. But they, the other thing that brought me together at, at that time, let me go back to that. The big problem in Hawthorne criticism at that time, biography, was why was Hawthorne melancholy at the end of his life? 
He had four, un, he died with four un, unfinished manuscripts on, his, on the table. When he was buried in Concord with the entire uh, flower of the New England Renaissance at his funeral, the copy of uh, Septimus Felton was lying on his coffin, something that um, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow noted because he was there in the crowd, wrote a poem about it. Uh, so that's the one angle. The other angle is what did, what did Hawthorne see when he went to Rome? He saw beauty. This is, this is a man who, what he, if, if you were going to church in New England at this time, which is, say, the, eight, the first half of the 19th century, you went to a, probably a white clapboard church with plain glass windows, uh, and uh, you uh, listened to a, 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 a sermon, if you were lucky, because at this time is the rise, we have the rise of Unitarianism, where the uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, the neighbor of Hawthorne, uh, it's hard to say a friend because they were completely incompatible, but a neighbor, and uh, uh, Rose Hawthorne remembers his visits of Mr. Emerson patting her on the head and giving her some candy. Uh, the rise of Unitarianism, his speech at the Harvard Divinity School was 1825. Uh, this is the evaporation of the, pretty much the last remnant of Christianity in, in uh, the most significant intellectual capital of uh, America. At this time, I'm talking about the Trinity, the evaporation of the Trinity, and the consequences that flowed from that. So Hawthorne uh, leaves there. He's confronted with, he's, so God, who controls all of our lives, not only took Nathaniel Hawthorne to Rome, he took Nathaniel Hawthorne to St. Peter's Basilica. And not only did he take him to St. Peter's Basilica, he took Hawthorne to the confessional in St. Peter's Basilica. Why is that significant? Because his most famous novel, The Scarlet Letter, is about the inability to go to confession, sacramental confession. This plagued Hawthorne for his entire adult life. What I learned in doing the research for this is that uh, the original plan for The Scarlet Letter was to have Dimsdale confess to a Catholic priest. Where are you going to find a Catholic priest in Salem in yeah. the 17th I know of one Catholic priest who showed up there, and his name was Isaac Jogues, minus fingers, because the Iroquois had just chewed them off. Uh, and the, the uh, Puritan uh, fathers, to their credit, treated him with respect and put him on the ship and sent him to France. Uh, unlike Quakers, they hanged the Quakers, but they treated uh, 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 yeah. Isaac Jogues with respect. So what, what, we're what are we talking about here? It's the central statement of the book you just held up, which is that beauty is a transcendental, which means it's one of those ultimates that, all we, that finds its uh, foundation in God. And so if you're brought into the presence of beauty, you're brought into the presence of the, the true and the good, which means you're brought into the presence of God. And that's precisely what happened to Nathaniel Hawthorne at this point. He was brought, the transcendental beauty of Rome and centuries of artwork that only could have taken place in a culture which had internalized the gospel over a thousand years, more than a thousand years, uh, had its effect on Nathaniel Hawthorne, and the beauty was just overwhelming. Now, we, we know this because he talked about it all the time. He talks about it in The Marble Fawn. He talks about it in the notebooks, and lots of what happens in the notebooks simply gets transposed into the marble fawn. And everything he saw, he saw in the presence of his daughter Rose. So conversely, everything that Rose saw, Nathaniel Hawthorne saw, including uh, literally bumping into Pius IX as they're walking through the uh, Vatican Gardens. Wow, <laughs> this this is... This is exciting. I was actually going to um, ask you about your PhD because I, I've never heard you talk about it. Um, and one, of, I've got, let's see, I've got most of your books on my shelf right behind me. But one of the things I loved about your writing, Dr. Jones, is that it's not only a penetrating analysis uh, on all sorts of different levels that people don't talk about. It's also just fun prose to read. It's well, thank you. <laughs> enjoyable to read. So, uh, it, it's it's always good. So um, we're going to talk about. I'm going to field a, a number of questions from our guild members 
for you about art history in your book, beauty, aesthetics. And the rest of this show will be this 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 first 10 minutes will be on YouTube and then the rest of it will be on spiritustv.com. And so if you want to be a part of the guild, that's meaningofcatholic.com slash register. That helps our apostolate. So I wanted to talk the, the subtitle of your book is The Conflict Between Mimesis and Concupiscence in the Final.